Welcome back to Bullet and Banter, episode four. Today I'm riding out with friend Martin Ray to look at the Ouse Valley Viaduct. Martin has done biking adventures all over the world and he currently rides a Triumph T100. So between us, there's plenty of rumble out on the Sussex roads today. And after a quick stop for some fuel, we were off. It's always great to see Martin. He's a real enthusiast and a teacher at Plumpton College, which we'll hear about later. So what is the Ouse Valley Viaduct, I hear you ask? It's actually the London to Brighton railway line that crosses over the River Ouse near Balcombe. They started building it in 1839, finished in 1842, which makes it an incredible 180 years old. And it's a super busy line with 110 trains apparently crossing it every single day. Well, let's go and take a look and also hear a bit more about Martin. It's probably <laughs> fine for half an hour, isn't it? Yeah, and there it is, the incredible viaduct. Just look at that. Do you feel a bit like you've been let out? <laughs> I do. I feel like Fred Dibner would be chuffed to bits with this. Who's Fred Dibner? <gasps> you can't say you don't know Fred Dibner. You and I are going to have a long conversation about Fred Dibner. So, the steeple, Jack. Yeah, go on. Do you not know? Okay, so Fred Dibner, he lived in Bolton and he was one of the last steeple jacks in Britain. And he was obsessed with Victorian engineering and Victorian times. Yeah. And then he became famous on BBC for doing exactly Fred Dibner. That. Fred Dibner. So did he use the chimney stacks to build this? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a bit before his time. But he was all about the detail, all about the manpower that was involved in it and the engineering and the structure. So Fred Dibner. So you'll have to Google him. He's got loads of stuff on YouTube. I have heard the name. I may have even heard you talking about him. Probably. Well, look at this, though. It is an extraordinary thing, isn't it? An amazing thing how many beautiful places there are around Sussex to visit. And, uh, can you think of any others? No. <laughs> <laughs> the seaside, you can see that. The seaside. <laughs> I feel like a roe deer having to prance across the grass. I'm exhausted already. It's not going to be my bikes. Well, Martin, you know, when, when I first met you, I thought that guy's a bit like a roe deer. <laughs> my, my students often say that. They say I move like a startled deer <laughs> because I'm standing and then all of a sudden poof, I'm off. So. <laughs> so you're a teacher at Plumpton College? Yes. What does that mean? What is Plumpton College? Do you so, mind me asking? Yeah, so Plumpton College is a land-based college just on the other side of the Downs. Land-based? Land-based college. So doing everything from animal care, equine, agriculture, countryside, I fisheries, and that's my department. you were going to say it's not at sea or something. It's not at sea, no, it's, it's not land at sea. Okay, so it's what's your sea. area of expertise? So mine's countryside, so that's what I do. So. Ooh. Ah. We had to pause for that. We had to pause for the um, train. Yeah, I'm doing green woodworking, so I teach students how to make um, all sorts of things, like hurdles and spoons and things like that. And then I also do... Yeah, hurdles. For made. jumping? Um, no, for holding in, for containing. It's you a can jump if you want, you've got a really so low So in people who ride horses and stuff, they talk about hurdles. It's totally different. So, so that's not a proper hurdle? No, no, no. no Yours no. are proper hurdles for keeping them in? That's it, yes. So have you got a nice tool set? Yes. <laughs> With and, a large knife? And thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of times when, when we've hooked up, you've told me about carving. You've got a, mm -hmm. a hobby carving yes. and stuff. 
Yes, I definitely like working with wood. There is the odd craftsman still around it. There is, <laughs> yes, there absolutely is. And I think we should always encourage people to, to take on that mantle and to do it themselves as well. So. I think that's inspiring. I mean, you look at this, you know, the sort of engineering. This will never happen again. Oh, go on, go on, me old son. Look at that. No. <laughs> Are you going to need a hand to jump down? I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll take it in stages. Are you going to have a go? Yeah, go on then. There you go then. This is where the comedy starts. Oh, Good effort. Well done. Is that as high as you're getting? Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> the thing Spill. is, you know what we're doing, Martin? So we're modelling our Merlin jackets. We are. And do we not look stylish? <laughs> when I was researching, I called up Merlin and they're just basically the most lovely people you can imagine. Me and Martin are both modelling Merlin. And I didn't even phone Merlin. <laughs> well, if you ever feel like you need a, a gentle chat with someone, come yeah. to me. <laughs> they're the people to talk Who to. Who knows about wax cotton? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to suggest yourself, so no, I don't think so. It'll be very helpful. <laughs> so, right, hold on. <laughs> There we are. Can you see the full look? Who would not want to wear this and look like us? <laughs> I mean, who? I defy anyone. <laughs> Great. Big thanks to Merlin. Absolutely. Well, that, that really is impressive, isn't it? Lovely spot to visit. We had good weather for it. Let's see if our bikes are still there. Do you know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> I was going, I'm sure it'd be fine. I think Let's fine. go get some coffee. <laughs> it's good. Or tea. Do you prefer tea? Coffee. Yeah, definitely. There's Vulcan tea rooms. What do you think? Why not? Do you think they'll serve a nice cup of coffee? Is it filtered coffee or is it? Yeah, yeah lovely. Is it, is it quite strong? Uh, no, it's sort of like normal, really. Maybe I'll have a tea instead. Okay. Thank you. But does the other gentleman have Do you have milk, Martin? Oh, yes, please, yeah. Yes. And yeah. sugar, though, That would be the starter. <laughs> I probably, oh, lovely, thank I you. Probably will. Tiny thank you much. so much. <laughs> okay. Look at that. All right, shall I pour you tea? Oh, God, yeah, you'll be mine. I can't wait. The was very nice, actually. Was that? Yeah, it was I very think. nice. But I do like a bit of Victoria sponge. I was going to say, I wasn't going to share it, but... Listen, no, you weren't. You didn't offer, did no, you? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could have done half and half, maybe next time. Oh, good job. You can make sure you pay. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was lovely. Thanks. See you next time. Well, having enjoyed the cake, and in my case, the buttery scone, along with a pot of tea and friendly service, what could be better? Thank you very much, Balkan Tea Rooms. Well done. <laughs> well done. So we thought we'd head back and try and catch a few nice shots for the way home. Today's ride out and afternoon tea with Martin was great. Finding that little tea room after seeing the viaduct was wonderful too. And both things seem to make a valuable connection with the past. And for me, I think Martin too, as he talked about Fred Dibner, that these things represent a special era of fascination and ingenuity. The very fact that the viaduct still has 110 trains crossing it every single day, 200 years on, and that you can still have afternoon tea almost anywhere you go in England, even if you're after coffee, says a lot. I 
guess my hope is there will still be people brave and creative enough to affect the next 200 years in positive ways. Someone once said, a cup of tea makes everything better. And I can only add that riding a motorcycle in the Sussex countryside comes close to completing the picture. Well, thanks again for watching Bullet and Banter. And big thanks to Martin Ray for joining me this time. So don't forget to subscribe and send me a comment. It'll be lovely to hear from you. See you next time.